Let's take a look at a basic horizontal projectile motion exercise. In this example, what we'll have is we've got the ground. Let's say that we have a tower. We'll put a cannon up on the tower. And we're going to fire a projectile some distance. We'll fire it horizontally, and then it comes to hit the ground. Let's say that our tower is 15 meters tall. And let's also say that we're going to fire our cannon with an initial velocity in the x direction, that is the horizontal direction, of 20 meters per second. What we'll also say is we'd like to find out what the range is, the range of our projectile. And that's going to be our displacement in the horizontal direction. Let's write down everything that we know. Well, we know that our displacement in the y direction, or vertical, is going to be equal to 15 meters down, so that's going to be negative. We'll just choose downward to be negative, 15 meters. We know that our initial horizontal velocity is equal to 20 meters per second. And because this is a projectile motion problem where we're going to ignore air resistance, the projectile will continue at that speed for its entire motion. Uh, we'll say that there's no acceleration in the uh, horizontal direction. So this will be zero, which means this is just equal to the horizontal velocity the entire time. We also know that the vertical acceleration is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second per second. That is the acceleration due to gravity. And because we're calling downward to be negative, that's why we have the negative there. Now, a couple things that we don't know. We don't know how long this takes, and we don't know what the horizontal range is. But we'll get those in just a moment. So let's treat each direction separately. First is the vertical direction. So the vertical direction, we can write down our equation of motion for displacement, and let's do it for the y direction, so delta y, and that's equal to our initial velocity in the y direction times delta t plus one half acceleration in the y direction, delta t squared. Oh, one more thing. The uh, velocity, initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero because our projectile starts firing horizontally and it starts traveling vertically from rest. Okay, let's simplify this a bit. Because we know that our initial vertical velocity is zero, this whole first term becomes zero, leaving us with just the second term in the equation. So delta y is equal to one half acceleration in the y, which we'll call g, or negative 9.8, g delta t squared. We're going to use this to solve for delta t, because once we have delta t, we can actually then get the horizontal range in the next portion of the analysis. So how we're going to do this is we're going to multiply both, c both sides by 2 and divide both sides by g. When, that, when I do that, I get 2 delta y over g. Right, get, that cancels out the 1 half and the g on this side, and that's equal to delta t squared. Therefore, delta t is equal to the square root of both sides. So I take the square root of 2 delta y over g. And I can put my numbers in now. I always wait until the end to put my numbers in. So 2 times negative 15 meters divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now when I do this, I get negative 30 divided by negative 9.8. Negative 30 divided by 9.8 is going to be uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere almost 4, but not quite. And when I take the square root of that, notice how the negative signs cancel out. I will get a positive number under the radical. 
and delta t computes as 1.75 seconds. So this is the first thing that we didn't know that we have solved for. Now we need to go to the horizontal direction. In horizontal, we just say delta x. We use the same equation just for x now. V x initial times delta t plus 1 half a in the x direction delta t squared. We can simplify this even more. We can say, well, this second term here is equal to zero because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. And we're just left with the first term in the equation. So delta x is equal to vx, remember we said that was just one single number, times delta t. What this turns out to be is delta x is equal to, let's put our numbers in, 20 meters per second times 1.75 seconds. Well, that's going to be 75% larger than 20. So 20 times 1.75 turns out to be 35. Our units, meters per second times seconds, seconds cancel out, we're left with meters, and that is our horizontal range for this projectile motion exercise.